Jaden Hardy is finally being given an opportunity to really show us what he's capable of with the Dallas Mavericks finally letting him play some meaningful minutes, and the results are showing that he might just be the biggest steal of the 2022 NBA draft. In games this season where he's been given at least 15 minutes of playing time, he's averaging 15.6 points per game on 60.9% true shooting, and that includes 44.7% shooting from three on five and a half attempts. That's some really, really good production. If you had a lottery pick putting up numbers like that, you'd be thrilled with that level of contribution. But Jaden Hardy wasn't a lottery pick. Jaden Hardy was drafted with the 37th overall pick in the 2022 NBA draft. Now, the concept of a steal is a bit of a subjective thing. For me, it's about how much value you're providing relative to where you're drafted. So for Hardy to be providing the value that he looks to be capable of as a second round pick, he definitely fits what I consider to be a steal. Understandably, Mavericks fans have been pretty frustrated that Jason Kidd hasn't been testing Hardy to see what he was capable of, especially considering the Mavericks have had to navigate some really unfortunate injury luck throughout the season, and they had a lot of stretches where they were shorthanded. But fortunately, since the trade deadline, Hardy's minutes have more than doubled, going from playing 10 minutes a game to 22 minutes a game. Jaden Hardy was a top five high school recruit, but after foregoing college to spend a year with the G League Ignite, his draft stock fell quite a ways after some tough scoring struggles, shooting 35.1% from the field and 26.9% from three. What's really interesting though, is that he hasn't really struggled to put the ball in the basket really at all in the NBA. He's actually proven that he's gonna be capable of scoring really efficiently, whether it's on or off the ball. Hardy is such a tough coverage because of his ability to make quick decisions out of a triple threat position. This means that when he gets the ball and he's in a position where he can either dribble, pass, or shoot, he doesn't waste any time making something happen, making it difficult for defenses to stay with him. Oftentimes, he already knows what he's going to do before the ball even touches his hands. He has some really fast processing. He's good at getting into open space when he notices the defense is overhelping in the paint, and he's got no problem knocking down catch and shoot opportunities, shooting 39% on catch and shoot shots, which is the fourth best efficiency of any rookie this year, attempting at least two catch and shoot shots a night. On top of this, he's really good at attacking closeouts, using this screen from Powell to get past McDermott so he can get ahead of steam going downhill before throwing it home. The added bonus that he provides when he's attacking closeouts is some super competent passing. Tim Hardaway Jr. is going to pass out of the drive over to Bullock on the wing, with Bullock planning to swing it over to Hardy. Now Hardy is going to recognize that Bain is in one of the worst positions you can be as a defender. He's recovering straight on, and so the second that Hardy gets the ball, he's going to take off, and what this does is force Dylan Brooks to step in front of him, and Tillman questions if he's going to need to provide help, and this leaves Powell wide open in the dunker spot with Hardy making the perfect read to him after drawing the defense's attention, leading to two easy points. We'll see something similar on this possession with Kleba sending it to him on the wing, and Hardy gets his defender to bite on the pump fake, attacking the closeout, which is going to draw a ton of defensive attention. But if you rewind and take a look at Davis Bertans, who cuts with Hardy when he drives, Hardy sends it to him once the defense is sold, and Bertans is going to flush it home. One area that's been intriguing is some of the blurring of the lines that Jaden Hardy has shown between being an on-ball and off-ball shot creator. He has a mismatch here against Tillman, so he's going to use this step back to get Tillman to bite before passing it to Kleba over on his right side. Hardy is going to immediately fake the cut up the middle to make Tillman commit to defending the give and go. And once Tillman has committed, Hardy cuts back up top before getting the ball back and using the space he created to knock down the really, really deep three. These more supporting role player aspects of his scoring game are enough to make him more than worth a 37th overall pick, but it's the fact that Hardy has shown an insane amount of self-creation ability that there's really just no way that all he is is a spot-up catch-and-shoot guy or just a guy who attacks closeouts. He also has a really nasty step-back jumper, which I gotta say isn't really something we see very often from rookies. 
yeah, there are some rookies who come into the NBA and they're good at creating space with the step backs, but they don't really have the efficiency. They're not knocking it down at a good enough of a clip that it's really a huge weapon for them. But with Jaden Hardy, that's not the case. His ability to stop and go and decelerate on a dime makes it really, really difficult for the defender to stay in front of him and not allow any space. And even though Hardy doesn't generate the most space in the world on his step backs, the virtually immediate deceleration is what creates the space. Now on these more stationary type of step backs, he's able to make it work so well because of how he sells it. Desmond Bain is shading him to the left side, so he stops and fakes this initial burst before faking a crossover to his right side to make Bain think that he's going to attack his front foot and go downhill up the middle. But when there's a split second hesitation from Desmond Bain, Hardy uses that to create some space and knock down the three. It's really impressive how reliable his step back jumper has been this year, shooting 41.2% on all step back jumpers and averaging 1.12 points per shot attempt, which is well above league average, not just in step back shooting efficiency, but in terms of perimeter shooting efficiency as a whole. He's a really aggressive scorer and he definitely doesn't lack confidence, which is a bit of a double edged sword, especially for a rookie. There's a couple smaller pieces of the puzzle with Hardy's scoring that are really good indicators that he's gonna have no problem as a shooter and scorer in the future. For one, Hardy is really good at getting to the line, attempting nearly five free throw attempts per 75 possessions, and he's drawing a foul on 41% of his field goal attempts off of drives this season. This is one of the hallmarks of a good scorer, being able to get to the rim and draw contact on a consistent basis, not just because you can get free points at the line, but because defenses have to play you differently when they know that you're able to draw that contact, they can't play you as tight. And so what that does is sometimes it allows you easier opportunities around the basket because defenses don't want to risk fouling you. Now, one of the problems is that Jaden Hardy still has a lot of room to grow as far as finishing at the rim, but the fact that he's able to draw contact and get to the line helps make up a little bit for the fact that he's only shooting 46% at the rim on the year. He's also only attempted around 75 shots at the rim this season, so his overall volume when it comes to shots in that area is still pretty low. So we'll have to see if that efficiency stays the same as his volume increases or if it improves or gets worse. The second great indicator of his future scoring success is the fact that he's an 83.6% shooter at the line. Typically, free throw shooting success does a good job of predicting overall shooting success. And given how well Hardy already shoots the ball, the free throw percentage is a sign that there's not really anywhere to go but up for him. So again, if all Jaden Hardy is, is a reliable spot up shooter who could attack closeouts and occasionally do some self creation, all of that alone would be fantastic value for the 37th overall pick, but there's still a lot more to his game than just scoring. Hardy has also flashed some playmaking chops that indicate his upside on offense is even higher than all of the other stuff that I've already talked about indicates. Despite his underwhelming field goal percentage at the rim, he's shown that he isn't afraid of getting into the paint off the dribble and forcing defenses into uncomfortable situations, taking Jang off the dribble and forcing Branham to slide over and help, leaving Green open in the corner for Hardy to send him the no-look pass for three. When he drives against Rudy Gay, he pulls the defense over towards the strong side of the floor, leaving Green alone on the weak side corner for Hardy to sling it out for the three. He's also really good at drawing help at the nail and capitalizing on the added defensive attention. And while these may seem like simple passes, he's the one responsible for creating these opportunities because he's the one drawing that defensive attention to create the open look for his teammates in the first place. He's shown flashes of being a really solid pick and roll passer, dribbling to where Reeves is going to be blocked by Rui on the drive, and then he hits Rui with the fake to get him airborne, giving him a wide open lane downhill, and when Gabriel steps up to stop him, he dumps it off to Christian Wood for an easy two points. He can also make some really difficult high level reads, drawing the ISO against Jackson Hayes and taking him off the dribble, noticing Wood over on the weak side completely open and then he slings it out to him while Josh Green screens Wood's man, leading to an open shot. This playmaking is an extra layer to his offensive game, making him a lot more of a diverse offensive player than I think he really gets credit for. 
the finishing is the biggest hole in his game right now. There's no doubt about it. This play does a good job of encapsulating kind of where Hardy is at as a finisher and overall interior threat right now. Like I've covered, he can stop whenever he wants to, to change directions, and he has really good control of his pace. He's got a really tight handle. It's not like he's being reckless with the ball, but once he gets to where he takes off for the shot, he really doesn't elevate that much, so Jalen Williams has a pretty easy time of blocking his shot. If he can work on elevating more on his attempts around the rim, it's likely going to make finishing a lot easier for him. He's got a 6'9 wingspan, which already helps. He just needs to get off the ground a little bit more so that he can get out of reach of defenders a little bit better. We know that he can elevate when he wants to because he's had several highlight dunks this year where he's gotten up pretty high. He just needs to be able to do that on a consistent basis and recognize that if he does that on his drives where he's attempting layups as well, it's going to make things a lot easier for him. On the defensive side of things, he's actually been a lot better than I expected albeit not necessarily anything to write home about. He's good at containing guys on ball, and he seems to have some solid defensive instincts. It's going to help a lot if he can put on some muscle just for some added strength to have a shot at slowing down some of the bigger guys if he ends up getting switched onto a mismatch, but I'd say he's been, at bare minimum, a neutral on the defensive end, and for all of the Mavericks' problems defensively this year, I don't think he's part of them. There are very few things that are standing between Jaden Hardy and genuinely developing into a star. He's only 20 years old, so it's fair to say that he's probably not even close to the best that he's going to be yet. And if the Mavericks really did get a future star with the 37th overall pick, then you don't really get much more of a steal than that. Huge thank you to all of my patrons for helping make these videos possible. If you enjoyed the video and you want to see more like this, be sure to subscribe and leave a like. That's the easiest way to support the channel and help me continue making content. If you want to help support the channel further, you can click the link in the description to become a patron and join my Discord. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.